Good morning, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Now I'm gonna pass. Uh, it's my turn to present the background of Kato. Background of the immigrants in Kato. It was home to the earlier science of the Englishman, Sir Arthur, Lord Mayor, Lord Mountbatten of Burma, Cafe organizing their film magnet, Look One Two. Its illustrious residents included the ancestral family of Minister Mentor Lee Kuan Yew and Senior Minister Go Chok Tong. The incumbent president Selapan Ramadan lives in Kato with his primary residence instead of Lee's Tana, Southeast Asia, answer to the US White House. Since the 1990s, an increasing number of wealthy Americans have moved from Bukit Bima into Kato Lakhvi, residences architecturally unique, conserved shop houses, meant for the glamorous millionaires. In addition, many other Peranakan shop houses have been conserved in high end boutique hotels, serving wealthy Asian, European, and American expatriates moving away from the terrorist prone zone of taller villages such as Sandalwood. Uh, Katong is preferred as these families do not engage in conspicuous consumption available in the densely populated and very public object and city areas. Thank you. Now I'm going to talk the next slide. Good afternoon, my name is Vanessa and I'm here to tell you about Fort Katong. Fort Tanjong Katong, which took from 1879 to 1901, was one of the oldest military forts built by the former British colonial government of Singapore. The fort gave its name today to today's Fort Road and it used to stand on the grounds of the present Katong Park. Fort Tanjong Katong, the only one of its kind on the eastern side of the island, was part of the series of defensive batteries and fortification according to the southern coast of Singapore that defended the eastern approach approaches to the Singapore harbour and Singapore town against seaborne attacks. Due to its poor structure design and remoteness, the fort was subsequently embedded, abandoned and buried until its recovery, rediscovery in 2001. Found with traces of a moat, and near intact pyramidal wall, the fort was considered by local archaeological experts to one of Singapore's most important archaeological finds of its true 19th century fort today. Fort Tanya Gata was designed and built in 1879 by Henry Edward McCallum, who was colonial engineer and architect of the Singapore History Museum on Stanford Road. I will now end my talk. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. I I am here today to talk about the Eurasians. The Eurasians were the descendants of Eura of European and Asian heritage. They were the among the amongst the first Singapore residents, Singaporean residents. With evidence of them living here soon after the founding of Singapore by Sir Stafford Raffles, they migrated from Sierra Malacca, Goa, and Macau. Their Caucasian origins followed the colonial trading powers of the of the last four thousand four hundred years, nearly mainly Portuguese, British, and Dutch. With time, the Eurasians became a distinct group. Eurasians marrying Eurasians. They, they, are, they, they are hers, hers to the heritage of diverse traditions. Most are Christian, mainly Roman Catholics, and religious celebrations play an integral role. Food is also distinct and varied. The devil curry, ruler, vin, vinadu curry, and roast and pies. <laughs> since, since the since the mid 19th century, the Eurasians lived in Kampong Glam, later in enclaves in New York. Newton and Upper Serangoon, and then moving to Mahokatong and Sikla. The eastward migration made 
Catons synonymous with Eurasians, even though the Eurasians today live all over the island. Of various classes and communities within Singapore. 
and thus able to gain assistance and first-hand information regarding what, is, what was happening in the city. He was respected by leaders of the European commun community and supported by influential Malays and Indians, who often felt powerless to prevent Chinese gangs from ro roving into their districts, assaulting people, and robbing the common people. He improved the efficiency and training of the police force. Among the measures he introduced were night classes for members of the force, creating pension scheme for retired policemen, morale in the, in the force improved and the crime rate in Singapore increased under his leadership. Dunman retired from the police force in 1871 and spent the next few years on his coconut plantation roof estate, which is now Mount Breton area in Kampong.